Welcome back to our ongoing live coverage of the war on Ukraine. As we enter the third week of Putin's war, I see people calling for an off-ramp for Putin, that Zelensky should take the deal Putin has offered to stop the killing and avoid nuclear war. We have to give Putin some kind of face-saving formula he can sell as a victory. Of course we want the killing to stop, but it's precisely the risk of nuclear war that makes any outcome Putin can sell as a win incredibly dangerous. It would give a green light to nuclear blackmail worldwide. Any country with nuclear weapons would hear a simple message. Go ahead, do what you want, the West won't stop you. China and Taiwan, North Korea. Think about Pakistan. They want Kashmir even more than Putin wants Ukraine. Think about the renewed incentive for rogue regimes to get nuclear weapons. Iran, of course, and Venezuela right here on our doorstep. A nuclear proliferation nightmare. No. To prevent more death and destruction and danger to us here in America, Putin must lose and be seen to lose at home and abroad. Are we really doing everything we can short of going to war ourselves to make that happen? As Biden and Western leaders claim, no way. There are massive holes in the economic sanctions. And no, it's not just the Europeans being unwilling to give up their addiction to Putin's energy. As Kimberly Strassel has pointed out in the Wall Street Journal, quote, sanctions won't apply to Russian banks' energy transactions until June the 24th, meaning Wall Street can continue to trade in Russian oil and gas. The White House is blocking a Republican bill that would impose real sanctions on Russia's oil, gas, mining and mineral sectors. The U.S. has sanctioned precisely zero, zero of the key oligarchs around Putin. This is not serious. Biden's strategy seems to be economic half measures and military appeasement. It is not working. Joining us now to react, former State Department spokesperson and Tennessee congressional candidate Morgan Ortegas. M Morgan, um, your reaction to what I just laid out there? Well, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I actually had an op-ed about this, talking about the sanctions half measures. I mean, listen, it's one thing to say, for example, uh, that we're not going to buy Russian oil uh, and gas. Uh, the problem is, if you don't put secondary sanctions uh, on that industry, then someone else just buy that, buys that. So what we see is an effort here, right. a lot of virtue signaling from this administration. Uh, every move is a virtue signal. Look, we're going to sanction banks, for example. Well, we're not sanctioning all of the banks. We're letting some... Uh, at least four or five key banks, uh, they are not under the current sanctions regime. So therefore, people know how to get around it. So what I see, and it's funny, it's funny that you use that term half measures. That's consistently what I've said for the past few weeks as well. It's these half measures so that we can go out and give a press conference or have a tweet that sounds and looks really tough. But anybody who's actually behind the scenes knows that we're not going the full way to stop them. I mean, listen, if there's anything that we've learned uh, is that deterrence, is the strategy that this administration pursued as it relates to Ukraine, that deterrence strategy failed because Russia, in fact, invaded Ukraine. We know that Jake Sullivan, it's been reported, the national security advisor, held up lethal aid to uh, Ukraine at least three times over the past year. And this administration administration kept saying things like, well, if Russia invades, then we will provide said lethal aid. Um, and so it was always sort of a day yeah. late and a dollar short. And why does all of this matter? Well, it certainly matters in the context of Taiwan, right? And China keeps making threatening moves about Taiwan. And if we're learning any lessons here, it's that the strategy that the Biden team had, you know, for the past six months to deter Russia didn't work. And so we all need to learn uh, these lessons about arming uh, Taiwan early and about these sanctions half measures don't actually deter anyone. They just encourage people who are smart enough to get around them. Exactly right. What a, what a great summary. And then oh, everywhere we look now, <laughs> it seems that this, 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 this kind of projection of ambivalence, weakness and so on is just, is just encouraging more chaos around the world. I mean, just look at, I mean, ju just in the last 24 hours, this, what, do, what do you make of this rocket attack, this mis a missile attack, Iran? Um, suddenly getting involved in the um, action. What's, what's going on there? That was, that, was, that was suddenly, that was out of the blue, and we're at the same time talking yeah. to them about um, a nuclear deal. 
Yeah, those pictures that you're showing right now, if I can see it correctly out of the corner of my eye, are not Russia and Ukraine. Uh, those pictures are coming out of Iraq in Erbil. Um, it came, uh, these ballistic missiles, at least 12 of them, if the media reports are accurate, uh, it came very close to our consulate and other facilities in Erbil in Iraq, uh, where we obviously have American civilians, military there. So listen, some of my friends are based there right now. Um, we were all very concerned last night when we saw the reports. Why does all this matter? Number one, the administration tried to downplay this as much as possible. You didn't even see a statement. Listen, American lives were threatened. We could have easily lost American diplomatic and military personnel mm -hmm. last night in Iraq. And you didn't see a single statement from the Secretary of State, uh, from, uh, from the spokesperson. Uh, you did finally see Jake Sullivan address it today. And what did Jake Sullivan say? He said the Iran deal isn't off the table. So you have Iran doing two things. One, uh, they're pointing <sighs> ballistic missiles at Iraq towards our facilities that could have killed Americans last night by the grace of God or maybe Iranian incompetence. It didn't. Two, uh, Tom Rogan detailed from the Washington Examiner detailed this week, did you know that Iran actively right now, as we're all watching this show, has an assassination plot attempt out on Mike Pompeo, Brian Hook, the Iran envoy, and John Bolton? You don't have to agree with their politics or even their foreign policy <laughs> uh, to know that a sovereign nation should not threaten former uh, cabinet members from the last administration threaten them to the degree that these gentlemen still have to have diplomatic security, which obviously normally isn't authorized. So we are begging and pleading. By the way, guess who our intermediary is for the Iran deal that we're begging and pleading to get back into with the group who's responsible for the pictures yes. that you could see it's... just last night? The Russians. So on one hand, this administration so is Russia is bad. It's terrible. Um, but they're letting them negotiate on our behalf. Well, if they're that bad, why are they negotiating for us? And why are they hitting us with ballistic missiles and threatening to kill former cabinet members. It's, it's amazing. Asinine. It's just, I know, as it's a great word. I love that word. It's so true. And it's just that, you know, it, it's like the whole it's, strategy seems to yeah. be sort of running around, around the world trying not to offend anyone. Absolutely hopeless. Uh, Morgan Ortega, it's right. great to see you as always. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.